Hi, my name is Megan Gertler, and I did my Educational Giants report on Richard Rotori. Richard Rotori was born on October 4th, 1931 in New York City to his parents James and Winifred Rotori, who were literary political radicals. From an early age, Richard was captivated by the Marxist theories and were avidly followed by his parents. Being captivated by these theories and politics, Rorty studied ravenously and gained vast interest in the flaws of Marcus theories. Even after he had grown Marxism, he felt a continuing tension between the literary and artistic cultivation of self and commitment to achieving social justice and articulating a concept of objective truth. With this being said, he was not able to resolve the issue until later in his career. At the age of 15, Richard was accepted to the University of Chicago, where he received his bachelor's degree in 1949. While attending the University of Chicago, he had an immense account of influence from great thinkers, like Leo Strauss, Richard McKinnon, being in this environment where he gained a lot of information regarding the history and philosophy. After this, he enrolled in Yale, where he received his PhD in philosophy seven years later. Richard became a very interested in analytical philosophy, and throughout his lifetime further developed his especially in the form of a contemporary and analytical philosophy. Many of his ideas were spread by ideas brought to the United States by three men, Rudolf Carnap, Hans Richard Bach, and Alfred Trotsky, who immigrated from Europe. The investigations of their philosophies led him to create neopragmatism. Neopragmatism is the scientific and philosophical study of people who and why they abandoned or adopted languages over time according to social conventions and usefulness. Rorty's branch of philosophy was related to the thought of social hope. This came from the belief that without having representationalist accounts and without metaphors between mind and the world, human society would be behave much more peacefully. In the 16th and early 70s, Richard Rory became widely known because of his contributions that he made in analytical philosophy and mind and language. One of his contributions that he made was an analogy entitled The Logistic Turn, which in this group of poems, books, and other writings. These writings became a start of thinking of issues and set of pace for the future philosophy. From this point, Richard's views on analytical philosophy altered in a significant direction. Culture and historical interests was now new and very exciting to most philosophers in this time. But to Rory, this was just boring. He saw interest in different directions, looking to foundations in knowledge and ethics. In doing this, he had assembled to help of John Dewey, Martin Heidegger, and later Winston Stein. Together, the four men, in different ways, hunted to redirect the discipline to focus on social and historical changes, or on language as a human practice rather than on the illustrious pursuit of timeless truth. Philosophy was to be reconfigured in terms of humanitarian so as to be devoted to interruption of history and culture. In the late 70s, Rotori became president of the Eastern Division of American Philosophical Association. During this time, there was much controversy on the topic of his views on philosophy. Richard continued to illustrate what was skillful academic statesman he was, which led him to hit this position. While this was happening, there were many scholars making claims that Anglo-American analytical philosophy had attained a disproportionate and exclusionary power within professional organizations. Being president, Rory gave a speech teaching on perspective and offered many ways in which to compromise and to make accommodations between the two groups, the analyst and the pluralist, which left an outstanding effect on the American philosophical profession. In 1981, Richard received a five-year award for the fellowship from the MacArthur Foundation. Soon after this, just a year later, Rorty left Princeton to go to the University of Virginia in order to become a professor of humanities. The two events marked Rorty's rising public position as a philosopher who had significant things to share to an audience that goes beyond the usual limits of his discipline. His perspective was being translated so that it, it could become commonly, commonly commonly known all through Europe and Japan. People were immersing themselves in his theories of deconstruction, critical theory, and postmodernism. It was acknowledged by the New York Times that Richard Troy was one of the world's most influential contemporary thinkers. He had become an international icon. Today, Richard Troy, all today, Richard Troy and all other people in the philosophical fields 
with influence of thoughts, opening the doors for others to form their own thoughts and become free thinkers, people of themselves. Richard is a model today because of his ability to put himself in other people's shoes and to see from the point of view in return of being people closer together. If all people have this trade, there will be much more subversely cultured and more respectful of the international relationships. In so doing, we could be able to achieve an accommodation his commendable desires to protect the future of our world civilization despite the fragile and vulnerable. In my classroom, I want to be able to incorporate Richard Torrey's philosophical views so that my fellow students and I can learn to be free thinkers and learn to extend compassion to different cultures and understand the others around us. Thank you.